y'all. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Ms. Espinosa and I teach kindergarten in Texas. And in today's video, I will be sharing 10 must-have items for new elementary teachers that I think will make your lives much, much easier your first year of teaching. I will be sharing how I use these must-haves in my classroom and all of the items will be linked in my Amazon storefront. So you can click on my teacher must-haves shopping list to find all of these items. And I do get a tiny, tiny commission if you purchase anything from my storefront. So I would really appreciate it if you consider doing so at the end of the video and let's get started. The number one must have was one of my first purchases as a new teacher. It is a scotch laminating machine and I paid about $30 at the time and it's been the best $30 ever. So my scotch is already like six years old and I've had no issues with it. And I find that a lot of teachers will specifically recommend the Scotch brand. Like you cannot go wrong with it. It will be a great investment and it is so easy to use. Simply plug it in, turn it on, wait for the light that says ready to light up. You place the laminating sheet in between the two lines to laminate. And I love that there's enough space for the sheet to go through and not get wrinkled. So on that note, I do not recommend getting the Office Depot laminator. It's really, really narrow when you're putting in your sheet. So if you put it in crooked, it's gonna get wrinkled. Do not get the Office Depot one. So with that said, must have number two are laminating sheets. As an elementary school teacher, you will probably laminate a ton, especially if you're teaching lower elementary. You will be spending a lot of time prepping materials like center activities and just different types of learning resources. And to increase the durability of all of these materials, you're spending a lot of time finding and prepping this material. So I recommend that you laminate them so that you can reuse the activities every year. It's done, you just need to pull it out the following year. So I have been purchasing this pack of 200 Nuova laminating sheets for about $16, which is the best deal that I've been able to find. And the quality is just as great as the Scotch brand. The number three must have is cardstock paper. Again, you're gonna be prepping and printing a lot of new material. So to increase the durability of your laminating resources, I recommend using cardstock paper since it is thicker and less flimsy than printer paper. And I have been buying this brand of cardstock called Nina, which has been really great. And it's also a really great deal because it's 300 sheets for about $13. So I print all of my laminated resources on this cardstock paper. Must have number four is a swing line guillotine to make paper cutting a faster and more efficient process. This was also one of my very first purchases because again, you will be prepping a lot of centers, a lot of handouts, and it's just gonna make your life easier when you are prepping. It's going to save you a lot of time. So I've also had the guillotine for about six years and it's excellent quality. I recommend it as a splurge as well. The blade has remained sharp and it's not very heavy to carry. So the only little thing is that the hook does not stay in place and just be mindful of course if you have it in the classroom to keep it out of reach of children. Must have number five is an organizational system. And I'm going to say system because it's going to require multiple things and an organizational system looks very different for every teacher. So that's part of your first year of teaching is figuring out how to get organized. My organizational system includes many things like binders with sheet protectors, stir light doors, stir light bins, an organizer cart, heavy duty lakeshore bins, lakeshore book bins, crayon caddies, target bins, some pouches from Amazon, and bathroom caddies from Walmart. So I started out teaching pre-K and I really, really loved that our curriculum was based on themes because it made it so easy to organize everything. So I would print my original copies and I would file them inside sheet protectors and I would have all of my binders just organized based on themes. I have a lot more binders now that I have been teaching kindergarten, but I have continued this binder system and I do think that the Office Depot sheet protectors are the best quality. They're not very flimsy like other brands. And these Starlight drawers were also one of the first purchases to keep all of my things organized. And I have some bigger bins, some bigger Starlight bins where I keep art supplies and extra materials 
And those bigger bins were graciously gifted to me by my mentor teacher when I finished student teaching. So they've been super, super handy. And like I said, once I got to kinder, I started making a lot more copies and I just needed a better system to keep all of my copies organized. So just this summer, I purchased this 15 bin organizer and it's actually like right behind me. I love it. It was really worth it even though it was a bit of a splurge. And I really love this 15 bin one because on this side where you see the five bins, I keep all of my small group activities and materials that I need just for that specific small group. And then on the other 10, I keep my skill-based work. So I have been much more organized with my copies and it's really helpful to plan ahead too and have a place to store them. I also have these Lakeshore connecting book bins where I store my leveled readers. And then I also have heavy duty Lakeshore bins where I keep all of my printed centers so that I just have to pull them out. And then I also have some smaller bins from Lakeshore where I keep manipulatives and other hands-on materials. And I also have some Lakeshore crayon caddies for every table. And because of the individual supply situation last year because of COVID, I ended up purchasing about 15 um, black and gray bins from Target. And so this year I'm using them for centers the black ones are literacy and the gray ones are math. And then I also have a couple more small ones where I keep manipulatives or books. And this school year, I got these white zipper pouches to store my center activities. I really liked them, but some of them were defective and the zipper kept getting stuck. So for some of the bags, I placed a very small binder clip at the end so that the kids don't zip it all the way and then it's a pain to try to get it open because it's stuck. So that's been my little trick is the binder clip and it's just for a few of them. Overall, I do like these pouches to store my printed centers. And lastly, I also purchased these black bathroom caddies from Walmart to store individual table supplies. And these caddies, I keep colored pencils, jumbo pencils, scissors, and a glue sponge. So my kids don't have to get up and walk around and waste time finding materials. They're at their table. Must have number six is a planner. Find a planner that will work for your needs. I personally just always purchase one from Target and this school year I purchased the simplified planner. Some teachers are very particular about what they need for their planner needs. And there's a ton of teachers that also sell their own on Teachers Pay Teachers. So you can find teacher created planners on Teachers Pay Teachers. But if you just need something simple like me, I really like the simplified planner. I just like a really big calendar where I can write all of the events, the important events going on for the month whether it's school related or just personal stuff. I just like to have it all in one big monthly template. And then I also really love having like the individual list for the day. So I usually write down things that I would like to get done and things that I have to get done. So I really like all the space that is provided to make your to-do list for the day. Must have number seven is a small group caddy. And being organized during this small group time will maximize the short amount that you have with each group. You cannot waste any time. So some materials that I store in my heavy duty Lakeshore caddy are small whiteboards, a crayon box with dry erase markers and erasers. I have small mirrors and I have books and activities that I will use with each group. So that's always just ready to go. And I love how large it is so that I can fit all of that. And then, like I said, if I need anything extra, then it's just right here behind me in the individual small group bins. Just make sure that you have pencils, crayons, just whatever material you're going to need for your small group. I highly recommend you have something to keep it in. Must have number eight is a teacher cart. So for me, my teacher cart has been incredibly helpful when I prep at home and I have to bring a ton of materials back. So instead of having like 15 different bags, I just put everything inside the cart. And it's also really helpful when I have to carry a ton of copies. And I actually have a couple of teacher carts. I have one that I keep in the classroom 
and that my school gave me this school year. And then I have one that I've had from Office Depot. That one is a really great one, very sturdy. So that one I've had for some years now. Must have number nine, I think, are pocket charts and sentence stem. So you can use pocket charts for whole group or small group activities. And if you teach them a whole group activity or a small group activity, then that can turn into an independent learning activity and it's a little bit more hands-on. And as an early childhood teacher, the most common way that I use these pocket charts are for sorting activities like syllables or nouns or day and night. And then I also use it for reading. It helps children understand to read from left to right, to go to the next line. It teaches them to leave space between their words if they have to copy sentences. And adding those pointers really just makes it a lot more fun for the little ones. You can also use it to display sentence stems, vocabulary, or even objectives for the day. I think pocket charts are very versatile. And must have number 10 are teacher snacks. Like whatever snacks you like, I recommend keeping snacks in your classroom. Some days you will barely have time to eat or some days you just won't bring any lunch at all. I like to keep healthy snacks in stock like popcorn, snack bars, chocolate covered almonds, crackers. And I have also found a couple of microwavable Indian food brands that are actually pretty good. One of them is Maya Kaimal and another one is Tasty Bites. So if you see those in your grocery stores, like I have tried multiple ones and I really like them. Sometimes I also keep like little soups in the cartons and then I also try to just have fresh fruit like bananas, apples, or oranges. And I also keep honey for when I want to drink tea. And I also keep pink salt in case I really like salty food. So I always add extra salt. And I splurged my second year and I bought myself this Whirlpool mini fridge from Target and a microwave. So I like to keep yogurt, cheese, and protein drinks in my little mini fridge as well as frozen treats in the freezer. Like it's been very, very handy. I would not prioritize having a fridge or a microwave. Not Do not prioritize it your first year. Maybe your second or your third year you can do that. I just dreaded going all the way to the teacher's lounge. It's like literally the opposite side of my building. It's time consuming to go there, heat up my lunch, come back, because I will always try to work during my lunch time. And then it's also just more convenient too because if I want to make popcorn, I can microwave my popcorn. If I didn't finish my lunch and I have a few extra minutes, I can heat it up and like keep eating throughout the day. So I really love having my own personal mini fridge and microwave. But that's it y'all. Those are my 10 must-haves that I think every new elementary school teacher needs. And I would encourage you to create an Amazon wish list and share it with your family and friends, especially if you are a new graduate, I would ask for all of the things. Your first year of teaching can be very expensive depending on what materials you don't have in your classroom and you have to spend out of pocket. So if you're creating an Amazon wish list and you need more ideas on what sorts of things to add, I do have a short video where I share nine must-have manipulatives and then I have another video sharing 30 classroom must-haves specifically for pre-K and kinder teachers but it might work for lower grade teachers and I'm gonna link both of those videos in the description. They are also a part of my new teacher resources playlist, so you are welcome to take a look at that too. I just love, love helping new teachers. And that's it for this video. I really hope that it was helpful to you, that it provided some good ideas on things you will need. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.